Australia's first Indian magazine to have a national reach. Indus Age is the largest circulated South Asian magazine in Australia with five simultaneous editions. 55,000 copies printed monthly, 220,000 readers, largest network of clients, undisputed leader in community news. Indus Age is circulated in Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Brisbane and Perth to over 525 outlets. Grab your copy now to get the latest on the community, news from India, Bollywood, music and much more. For more info, log on to www.indusage.com.au. World Cup T20 is all about action, glamour, and excitement. But today we are with a person who's the backbone of World Cup T20. Nikoli, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. We also have with us two people, Kamil, ardent cricket fan and a cricketer himself, and Saurabh. Thank you for being with us, Kamil and Saurabh. Nick. You just celebrated 100 days countdown. How many more days left? So we've got 91 days to go until a year of two World Cups kicks off right here in Sydney. Um, so we have the opening match of the Women's T20 World Cup taking place in Sydney Olympic Park at Sydney Showground Stadium. And that features the hosts who are the defending champions, Australia, against India. And it's going to be a fantastic celebration that we've been working on the planning for a, a long long time now and now with less than 100 days to go it feels very very real and uh we yeah, we just can't wait for it to to come around and just to see all the um all the fans turn out and support their teams how's the support being for the women teams so okay, t20 i think we've just seen this incredible uh, momentum uh, behind uh, the growth of the game i think uh, it really for for me started um and really my eyes were opened at the back in england in the 2017 uh, 50 over women's world cup where we saw england take on india in front of the sold out lords and ever since that moment we've thought you know this t20 world cup in australia there's no reason why uh, it can't be at absolutely the same level and give an equal billing um, to the men's competition and you know we've seen you know, the FIFA Women's World Cup in France last year was was huge. Here in Sydney, the Netball World Cup uh, back in 2015. So, um, you know, we have really, uh, we're really looking forward to making that a major international event in its own right, which is why we've scheduled that in February and March. So we play those games in its own time slot. And then the men's is scheduled in October and November next year. What was the reason of having a, such a big gap between the women T20 and the men generally you have together or so one is happening in March and the other one is happening towards the end. What was the reason for having such a big gap? It's really as, as simple as um, we had an opportunity to host two major world events uh, in the same year. I think, you know, we've seen T20 cricket really come of age. And um, I mean, re it's only 10 years since the, or just 12 years since the first uh, world T20 um, last year, uh, we were really excited to see that the World T20 got upgraded to full World Cup status. Uh, we have seen uh, every member country across uh, the world that plays cricket given full T20 international status. We've now got rankings that comprise 80 teams. I mean, we've, you know, we've seen countries like Afghanistan really rise up the rankings. In the women's side, we've seen Thailand qualify for their for their first World Cup. P and G have qualified for their uh, first World Cup. So it very much is the the growth format of the game. And uh, as I said, we felt that hosting the Women's T20 World Cup in its own time slot, so you can play the main games under lights um, and really promote that very very um, as, as a major world event. Um, just it's, it's an opportunity to really accelerate accelerate that momentum and. Um, uh, and then, uh, as we all know, I mean, the men's event in October, November um, will be great. So in many ways, uh, we've got uh, 2020. It's a bit ceremonial. 2020 is the year of T20 here in Australia. Um, and um, the, the World Cup, you know, we've got two World Cups that covers two seasons. So it's just going to be a fantastic, fantastic year of celebration. That can only happen in Australia. You can have two summers, one in oh. Nowhere else you can have that two summers in a year. Uh, well, I, I mean, this I, I grew up in in, in Birmingham in uh, the UK, just around the corner from Edgbaston. 
cricket ground and coming here to Australia and seeing these grounds that are you know, 40, 50, 60, 90,000, uh, just the, you know, and the technology. I mean, T20 is all about, um, it's about amazing, amazing cricket, but it's also about entertainment and just, you know, whether it's the, you know, the Adelaide Oval, the SCG, the MCG, and then this amazing new stadium in Perth, just with all the technology and the lights, I think, you know, we can put on an incredible, incredible show for the world. And ultimately, what it's all about is it's about little girls and little boys um, and uh, getting them into getting into this game that we all love so much. Now, the English Cricket Board is launching 100 ball cricket uh, in 2020. What impact do you think it will have on men 2020 World Cup? I think it'll be really interesting to see how it goes. Um, I mean, I, for me, I think what I love about cricket, it's, uh, it's got amazing tradition, amazing stories, yet with the evolution of T20, it's become really progressive and it's been the way to get younger audiences. So, you know, I think it's, um, it'll just be, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I mean, um, the, the main thing is that we, as I say, we're getting more youngsters into this great game that we love. But I think there's no, there's no question, um, there's no question that, you know, now, as I say, with World Cup status, T20 is the format um, that is growing the game globally. Um, and, uh, and, and we've got to remember that the 100 is a domestic competition. So I think from an international perspective, um, it's, it's all about T20. Carmel, you had some few questions before you. The question came uh, Have you been the CEO for the T20 World Cup? You've been thrown a lot of questions and everything. How many times have you been asked questions about the India Pakistan game? I've lost count. <laughs> um, I think it, look, it's the rivalry that everyone wants to see in world cricket. And um, I mean, just to explain again why it's not happening uh, in, the, in the group stage or in the Super 12 stage of the, the men's competition is because Pakistan, at the cutoff date at the end of the last year in the rankings, were ranked number one and India were ranked number two. So it's just a mathematical impossibility that they could be drawn in the same group. That's not to say that they may not meet in the semi-finals. If one team finishes top and the other finishes second in their group, then they'll meet in the semi-final. Um, and if they don't meet in the semi-finals, but they both win semi-finals, then they'll meet in the final. So it's um, you know absolutely a possibility in the knockout stage, but from a um, from the Super 12 stage, it was just because they were ranked one and two in the world. It's just a mathematical impossibility. And for to, for for India Pakistan to play a super like in the group, uh, semi-final or finals, we as spectators and fans, we are really looking forward. So, so how's your expectation? Are you also looking forward for that clash? I think um, I think we're just looking forward to seeing some amazing, amazing cricket. The best players. In the world, I think, I mean, what's really exciting in this form, I think we'll see, you know, obviously the established players. Um, um, but it's, you know, there's in T20, um, some of the youngsters that are coming onto the scene, it only needs one or two amazing performances of the battle, battle ball to really make a, na a name for themselves. So look, I think, I know, you know, we saw it in, in the 2015 World Cup here where um, India played Pakistan in the, uh, at the Adelaide Oval was just the, the atmosphere was incredible, the audiences that tuned in from around the world. So it's, it's a clash, you know, the whole cricketing world would love to see. Um, but there's a bit to play out. There's a bit to play out before then. With the 50 over World Cup, we know when it was the first time it was staged in Australia, we went through the floodlights and the colour clothing. Mm. So this is the T20, which is first time happening in Australia. Mm. Is there any, any major changes or anything, something new coming up? with the format or anything you're coming up with the cricket? Well, certainly, I think we've, we've studied, studied the history um, very much. And uh, I think certainly I love going down to the Bradman Museum uh, down in Barrow. I love going to the National Sports Museum at the MCG. And you can actually see whether it's through World Series cricket into um, you know, the One Day World Cup, uh, the 92 World Cup, which we're here, which was fantastic. The 99 World Cup, which um, uh, I very remember very fondly going to, um, to watch games at Edgbaston. But I, I think um, what's really uh, exciting about next year is 
we've had incredible support from all of the cities. Mm -hmm. So the grounds, as I've discussed, will be amazing. The technology in the grounds will be amazing. The entertainment uh, will be amazing. But um, we'll have activation zones outside the grounds. There's going to be areas in the city where people can congregate and celebrate and all come together before the evening match. So the fact that T20 is three hours at night um, just means that people can have a, a, a you know a great um, a great celebration during the day and all come to the ground yep. uh, together. And then I think um, from a ICC broadcast perspective, I think the innovations um, that ICC TV are bringing, bringing fans closer and closer to the game. Um, will be fantastic. So whether you're in the ground or whether you're watching on TV, um, it's uh, you know it is the the, the innovative format, and um, you know I think again it's all about getting the, the youngsters into the game. Yeah. We've seen the announcements made through the Women's World Cup that we've got Kerry Perry coming in you know, mm. with Men's World Cup, and we know IPL is the biggest format at the moment with the uh, T20. Is there any Bollywood stars or is there any any Bollywood attraction coming to T20 World Cup? So um, I think we're re I mean we're so excited that Katy Perry has agreed to come yeah. to, to start with. So uh, the final of the Women's T20 World Cup is taking place on eighth um, of March, International Women's Day, at the MCG, which is the biggest cricket ground uh, in in the world. And we um, we felt that it was you know only appropriate that we have. You know, for this amazing World Cup moment, we we um, we we think of yeah, you know, we're thinking really, really big, mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, there's no bigger pop superstar than um, than Katy Perry. And she's got a very strong empowerment message. Certainly, my two little girls absolutely yeah. love love her song. So uh, we're really thrilled that we got our number one our number one pick. We're given that the men's is later in the year. We're still working through uh, what that looks like um, but we i mean we would we would love we'd love as many bollywood stars as possible to come and um, certainly i mean we're working very closely with uh you know with the entertainment section with the community to to think about what music people want to hear yeah. at, at, at games and um and i'm sure they'll be we'll be playing some some music that still hasn't come yet come onto the scene as well nick uh, could you tell us something about how the ticket pricing is fixed is it same for all the games, or or, or or there are some changes there for our viewers? Yeah, I think I think the main thing we've wanted to make sure that price isn't a barrier, and so we've really worked hard to make sure that all the pricing is very accessible. So we're very proud that every kids' ticket across the whole women's event, and across every group stage and every Super Twelve stage of the men's event is just five bucks. Um, so which is um, uh, and then for the uh, every game for the women's and then every group stage um, and then um, the majority of the Super 12 uh, stage matches, certainly all of the India matches, uh, the entry price for adults is just $20. So what that means is that you can come and watch the Women's World Cup, you can watch the Men's World Cup, the best teams in the world. You know, if you've got a family, two adults, two kids, you can come for 50 bucks. Yeah. So you know, this is about bringing the whole community together and um, we've sought to make it really, really accessible. When we get to the, the finals, and particularly the finals with the men's, um, the ticket pricing is um, is a little bit more, but we're already seeing just an incredible demand. Um, so, uh, and still, there are still very reasonably priced tickets, um, certainly to the finals as well. Saurav, you had some questions for Nick. Yes. Uh, so Nick, uh, we have uh, seen the men's T20 final schedule and it's on 15th of November. Mm. Now, Indian community has their biggest festival, Diwali, mm. on the same weekend, that is the 14th. Mm -hmm. So how do you think it will impact the audience for the finals, given that India makes it or they doesn't? And how do, uh, and how do you think it will impact the, the people from the subcontinent traveling mm. to Australia? Yeah. Because Diwali is a festival, if I tell you, people want to celebrate in their respective yes. homes. Yes. No, and it's a really good question. And I think the dates for the tournament were set well before I started working on this project. And uh, um, as, you, as you're aware, there's a, a whole future tours program where the dates are set 
um, well in, in advance. We'd love to think it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity. And, you know, just like Diwali, is, it's an incredible ce celebration with lots of fireworks, lots of music, lots of dancing. The T20 World Cup is absolutely, um, absolutely the same. So, you know, I think certainly for those fans that are based in Australia, um, you know, we'd say let's continue the celebration. Um, and um, for those that are traveling from, uh, from the subcontinent or from anywhere around the world, we'd say, you know, many have got family here in Australia and friends. We'd say come and make it a really, you know, a special occasion. Um, celebrate with family, celebrate with friends and come and watch an amazing World Cup. That's a really good. Who are the key T20 players to look out uh, for the Men's World Cup? Of course, Kohli is there and Steve Smith are on fire at the moment. Mm. Anyone else you think of? Oh, I think um, what's going to be really interesting is just a few of the emerging nations that come through, a few of the, the dark horses. So, you know, Afghanistan has, a, has a, a got the number one T20 bowler in the world in Rashid Khan. Um, they played a T20. They've got some very destructive bat batters. They played uh, a match against Ireland um, earlier this year and scored 278 for three. So they, they hold the world record for the highest uh, T20 score in uh, a, a T20 international. Um, so I think they'll be a bit of a force to be reckoned yep. with. They play India here in, in the SCG in India's last group stage match. So I think that will be a really pivotal clash. Um, uh, I think uh, Australia have never won the Men's T20 World Cup. Uh, yet their players seem to do really well in the IPL. Mm -hmm. um, so can Australia, you know, with the combinations, bring it all together? And I know certainly listening to Justin Langer, um, you know, and in playing an increasing amount of T20 cricket in the build-up to the World Cup, it's a very, very, very um, clear focus for them. And then, of course, you know, you've got England, who have just won the 50-over World Cup, and New Zealand, who are feeling a little bit bruised from that and have got some amazing T20 players. Um, and of course, they got to the final of the 50 over World Cup here in 2015. So there's a lot of rivalries at stake, a lot of um, a lot of amazing players to capture the imagination. And um, I'm, as I said, really excited to see some youngsters come through and make a big name for themselves on the world stage. And we know you told Katy Perry is coming for the closing for the T20 women. And uh, Kamal did ask about the Bollywood. But any, what, what, is there something exciting happening on the closing for the men on 15th of November? So we're working through that at the moment. Um, we're very focused on 91 days time. Uh, I think we've got Katy Perry uh, playing at the final at the MCG for the women's. Here at the opening, we have got, we're going to put on an amazing show. So we've got the creative director who did the Sydney Olympics opening ceremony. He's come back. Uh, and we're going to have some amazing talent, amazing Australian talent, very rep much representative of culturally diverse uh, Australian uh, community, some amazing up and coming young performers. I mean, I think we've recently launched an advertising campaign and an amazing guy from Melbourne who's uh, got Indian uh, parentage, Darren Hartz, who goes under the name of Hartz, has uh, recorded the track and he's just, um, just an amazing talent. So, but I think what we'll look to do, we'll just look to showcase all the talent around the world. We want to showcase the cultures of the different competing teams. Um, our, our tagline is um, welcome to the big time. So, you know, we're looking forward to people getting up and dancing and really supporting their teams uh, in the very different ways. And it'll be a great, just a great celebration. Um, so um, watch this space on the, on the talent of the men's. And, um, you know, I think uh, the, the first cab off the rank, as they say, is the women's. And we're just very focused on making the opening, Australia, India, an absolute Sydney, a massive celebration, and making the final in Melbourne um, you know, with Katy Perry. Uh, just an, in an incredible moment for um, not just cricket, um, but um, really just an amazing moment for sport. Um, Carmen, anything for the closing? So is there any official logo or motto for the T20 World Cup? Like there is generally a, like with World Cups, we associate some sort of uh, logos or mascots. Uh, mascots. Um, 
so uh, we so in twenty fifteen we didn't we didn't um, we didn't have a, a mascot as such. Um, we we're looking for people to come and celebrate in their own way. I mean, I think for me, if I think, you know, what's the difference between going to a kind of a normal, kind of regular international cricket match or going to a World Cup? Um, for me, it's having all the fans from all the different countries all in the same place at the same time, all celebrating for the matches that really, really count. Yeah. So in many ways, when we said welcome to the big dance, um, it's the, the big dance in, in Australian vernacular. It's the, it's the one that really matters. Um, T20 World Cup, this is the one that really matters. As I say, lots of expectation on the home team and the women's as defending champions. The home team and the men's have never won it. Um, you know, India missed out on the last one on home soil. They'll be wanting to. Um, they'll be really wanting to to win. They've got. You know, this era of um, India players is is phenomenal. Um, but arguably, they've missed out on the last couple of World Cups. Yeah. So there'll be um, a lot of expectation there. Um, and by saying, you know, come and get up and dance. Uh, yeah, I think the fans are. Uh, there's two. There's two groups of people that are the most important in the whole thing. One is the players, yeah. and two is the fans. Yeah. So um, uh, we're looking for you know, people to turn out. You're wearing your, your team jersey. We're wanting everyone to turn out in their team jerseys. Uh, and we're also we we um, you know we'd love to see um, people get behind some of the um, the other teams that are playing, whether that's the Netherlands, Scotland, yeah. uh, Ireland. Papua New Guinea, um, and um, certainly um, support a second team as well. Thank you, Nick, for the time and the dedication of driving one hour and looking for parking for 20 minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving us time. Thank you Nick. for and talking to me. No, it's brilliant. And wish you all the best for the competition. No, thank you. And thank you for all your support. It's brilliant. Thank you.